VIP 1 million quarterly free roll for Supernova Plus. 10 hours in. 100k for first. Final table coming 7 of 9. This is up here for PokerNerve.com and uh, in with a chance. Uh, we are a bit short. The average stack is 6.2. We have, as you can see, 4.3, uh, which gives us an M of 9 ish. <clears throat> and uh, I think I might actually raise on smoking for. Oh, it's pretty close. Yeah, it's pretty tight. I think I will. Uh, but uh, Clown Forest beat us to it. And Clown Forest is uh, very tight, so. I mean, very loose, very loose. <laughs> very tight. He's very, very loose, so uh, I probably would have uh, been jamming a bit there, but um, the weakest has flattered. Probably pot controlling with like a, when I say pot controlling, I mean maybe just uh, with like a 10 jack suited, king jack, queen 10 suited, uh, king queen, ace, ace 9 or ace 10 sort of thing maybe. Um, maybe uh, I think I would definitely 3-bet that against Clown Forest. Just because he's so loose, but he does fold the 3-bet, so I would just 3-bet it. But the weakest, I think, is um, not a, a particularly strong player and um, probably is not uh, quite attuned to all the uh, all the data and perhaps just being overly careful. And it was King Jack, so... Um, wow. Well. This is pretty close. Uh, let me think about this. Bullets opening. This guy opens one, two, three, four, five. He's M10. He's kind of a little bit loose, this guy. He opens a lot, but it is final table. I don't think we can quite fold to this guy with this hand, but I don't quite want to jam it. It's a little bit loose. Hopefully he hasn't got ace jack, that would suck pretty bad. I'm not really going to be folding at this point, so... To a crazy Russian. Uh, so I think I'm just going to raise. Very close spot. Um, it's sick if he jams because I mean he can have ace king and ace jack or pocket jacks. He doesn't really uh, continue with much worse. Um, but at the same time, he's a mad Russian. He might spaz out once in a while. That's why I didn't just jam. I wanted to give him a little bit of rope to play with. And I didn't just want to call because if it comes like a repeat jack or like a ten and he's got king queen. Um, we're just going to stack off, uh, I think, and it's just so gross. I mean, we just have the best hand so often on the flop um, because he's a little bit loosey-goosey. And every pot at this particular stage is just so critical with that. Um, I think that, um, yeah, just kind of fast playing it there, just protecting ourselves. It's a good result too because it just it just pulls this stack down a little bit uh, where we want it because he three bets a lot but he's M8 now and the blinds are up in two minutes so 
it's going to make it a little bit hard for him to make it a little bit hard for him to do anything too much uh, in terms of three betting, and he gets attacked here, so that's good. Snap jam by oh wow. Yeah, uh, queen. Damn. Wow, that's pretty sick. It's actually not too bad from a, a, a winning point of view, I guess. Um, I think I'm going to just play a little bit tight. I would probably steal this a decent percentage, but... Yeah, it maybe could have opened. It's kind of, kind of close there. Because these guys are all probably, I mean, these guys here are all going to be pretty tight. Uh, cut off, small blind, big blind, and uh, this player here, who is tight. And we get pretty good uh, leverage against their stacks where they can't really call, they have to jam or fold. Um, so he's pretty close. We're kind of playing a little bit of tight here just because of the ICM, and we have this kind of buffer at the moment where we're just sitting above half the table. You know, they're all sort of three to four mil. That was a very sick pot for uh, two pack. Very, very sick. And let's see if you can get this one back here. Oh, on the river, <laughs> revenge. <laughs> oh, that's really annoying. Very, very annoying there, because. Uh... It's a big pay jump. It's um, yeah, it's a huge pay jump. Well, I mean, it's not huge, but uh, ninth is fifteen k and uh, eighth is twenty two k. So each one of those pots was worth seven k for us. Seven k, seven k flips. Uh, I. Uh, this is pretty close. I th think. What am we going to do here? I think I will call actually because um, it's only a min, and I think that um, the pot odds are pretty big. I think we're dominated a little bit of the time, but I think that this guy here, Dewurst, does not. Uh, he does not. Uh, he does not see better ton. And so if we say flop was jack 5-3 and we check and he checks back, we can sort of get pretty good information and feel pretty good about our hand. Uh, I, I almost donked here, like 520. I think it's not a bad play because I think the worst is going to fold a lot if he's got high cards. And I think the weakest is... I've got a little bit of range. Um, well, I shouldn't say that actually because they're kind of tight. He's, he's probably got like, wow. Just trying to think what would make this raise here. I think that the weakest is, is the kind of player that might overplay uh, like tens here, or nines or sevens maybe. Um, I don't think the weakest is bluffing. I don't think they would, but they do have very high aggression post flop, so maybe they do. Maybe they do. Looks like she's going to have nines or tens. And oh my god, wow! She did have the set. Wow. I think I'm just going to min on smoking pot here, just rather than jam. Uh, I should sh probably be jamming because of the ICM on him, just shoving in on him, but I think it's one of those spots where you know he's so tight that it's not really necessary because I, I think if we min-raise, he's not going to just take advantage of that and say, oh, he's folding, I'm going to jam wildly here. I think it just protects us from the time he's got us crushed. Um... And we can't really afford to lose the stack size that he had. 3.8 or whatever it was is, is pretty devastating to us right now because it'll take us from fifth to bottom. And that's kind of why I'm playing very nitty at the moment. And unfortunately, we almost lost players, but 
they doubled. So they want us to do it the hard way. Uh, which is fine. The the main targets at the moment will be um, two pack clown and weak opening in you know when we're blind or late position kind of small blind big blind small blind button. Uh, not so much two pack because he's kind of getting a bit early when we're if we're buttoned you know he's sort of third pos. Um, but uh, if clowns hijack when we're buttoned the weakest is cut and weakest is cut off. Wow. Wow, this is one of those sort of sick folds that sick folds that you can kind of get away with in uh, this sort of situation that not normally you would. He's raised folded at M5 and he's been quite tight. I haven't seen him open final table yet, um, but he's managed to open raise lay it down. So he probably knows. I mean, if you open in that spot, normal in normal play, you know, you might just uh, what do we have fours? You might just, um, you're only M5, so you might just go, well, he's M4 virtually, so you might just go, well, I'm calling, I'm not folding. But in this sort of instance, you know that uh, smoking pot's not really messing around. You know, he's been pretty tight. It's lots of money up at stake. So you know he's not messing around too much. So you, you if you've got Ace-10 there, I mean, you're kind of crushed. Ace-Jack is probably crushed. Um, Whereas normally if you had ace jack suited there, you would just go, well, look, it's only, you know, if it's mid-stage, you know, you're like, well, I'm only going to have him four if I fold, and maybe he's got like sevens or, you know, whatever, I'm just going to call it off, and I'm getting pretty good pot odds, and, you know, go for it. But here, yeah, the completely different situation. Ranges, I think, are a lot more defined. Um, this purple guy here, bullet. Uh, you know, he's probably a player that can have a bit of a wider range and two pack, but in general, these guys are pretty, I feel, kind of playing pretty ABC. Love to see a call, obviously. Uh, any any time someone calls our tournament, EV potentially jumps uh, because of the chance of someone busting. Wow, ace ball. Eight. Hot. Yeah, <laughs> no one wants to bust. It's another seven k, seven k hand, and uh, very tough spot for Tupac, wasn't it? Just such a tough spot there. Really tough spot for Tupac there. Uh, he's got bullet on the button, who's a bit of a donk. Uh, very loose, could be jamming very wide. Um, but at, then at the same time, you've got kind of um, this ICM dilemma. Um, and you've got a pretty marginal hand. Uh, I think the call was probably okay. I think he's probably crushing bullets range. Well, I mean, you can never be crushing it with Ace-5 suited, but... Well, hopefully we can get it to fold around here. Weakest is uh, raised first in. I think we have to just fold again here. It's a bit annoying. I would have jammed uh, if it folded to us. And I think if weakest had opened, I would have jammed as well. Just because raise first in from cutoff is... And button's kind of high. Oh my god, I just don't think we're ever going to lose someone. <laughs> Another 7k. So the fourth or fifth one. It's like every every time... The short stack doubles, it's like bye bye 7k. It's good to see these guys are, uh, you know, I mean, I mean, this strategy we're, we're, we're playing, I mean, we could easily have lost like three or four players, so. Um, it's just a pity the short stack keeps doubling and then it's going to be our turn soon. And will we double? Or will we be the bubble boy? Final table, well, not bubble boy, but. Yeah, you know what I mean. Actually, really haven't had any close ones. 
have we? I mean, there's always been been getting dealt trash. If this was pocket eights, it would have been a pretty close one. And I'd probably raise the fold, I think. Pocket tens, I'd probably just shove. Problem with raise, raising and then calling with pocket tens is the ICM is kind of pretty nasty. Looks like an ace king here for Marin. Very hard for Argentul here to call. And he has been pretty tight and he is UTG, so. It's always good that the if the big stacks can keep building Marin and the weakest. <clears throat> but the chips have just been spewed around everywhere at the moment. Everyone's pretty level and there's no deal making. <laughs> so it's just going to be a fight to the end. This is probably when there's the greatest chance of someone busting is when Bullet opens and just doesn't fold because he's a bit of a Russian maniac. Calls with some hand that he should fold. And he does raise a lot, but he's just going for the jam, so... Wow, he's king. It could be our turn here. It could be our turn to try to make something happen. And uh, I think I'm just going to shove here because of the ICM. decided to show that one because uh, I think that I'm going to be jamming a lot in that spot. Unfortunately the blind's gone right up on us there. Uh, right on us it's gone up. Um, and we're still 7th. I mean this guy's only M5. So players are going to start jamming kind of wide. He's just got a little buffer on us now, this guy. Just popped up. Oh, someone please bust one time. Okay, come on, this time, please. Wow, his queen is pretty loose. Queen. Wow, I don't like that call. I don't like that call at all. It's too loose. This queen suited is just too loose there. In the bubble. Um, I mean, he's not jamming wide, that guy. He hasn't been jamming much. He hasn't been jamming too much. Uh, I think I got a knit, knit fold here, M7, am I? Yeah, I think I'm going to make a nitty fold. Uh, yeah, I mean, he hasn't been jamming much, UTG. I mean, open jamming much he's in early position i don't think he hasn't got he's not going to have ace 10 i don't think ace jack maybe um but most of the time decent pairs ace jack uh decent pairs ace queen ace king maybe ace jack suited i guess but ace queen suited is just not doing well against that range uh and it just uh as you can see crippled two pack and uh really elevated the bubble factor for us quite significantly since two packs likely to be the next to bust and we can excuse me move up seven thousand dollars holies that is huge seven wow that is just disgustingly sick that was <laughs> that was crazy that was crazy. I don't hate the jam because bullet just opens so wide and you got the ace, you know, blocker, but it just, it just sick that he woke up with kings there. I mean, really, he opens uh, everything under the sun from small blind, raise first in, small blind 76%. Like, give me a break. He wakes up with kings.
Finally. Okay, seven of eight. Eighth is twenty-two k. And two packs should bust. We so uh, M two three bigs should bust very soon. Oh, we almost lost him. <laughs> well, at least we get 22,000 if we bust, because I would have been uh, a bit disappointed if we came ninth after all the all-ins. I would have been a bit tilted for the rest of the day. Um, yeah. Excuse me, guys. Sorry, I got a bit of a cold and sore throat. That's why I'm talking a bit, sort of mellow. Uh, we haven't actually had any hands really that are stressful, have we? I mean, if we had like sevens here, it'd be kind of stressful. It'd be calling, I guess, but stressfully calling. Ace ten. Eight of eight. Got to make something happen. Wow, I think I would have jammed that. Now we get two pack. Someone wake up with a hand. It's actually kind of exciting, isn't it? I mean, every hand you're like, there's a jam, and you're like, someone wake up with a hand. Come on. Someone wake up with a hand. Not going to happen with deuce tan off. Just going to fold a little bit fast. Um, well, actually, probably not quite necessary. I'm just thinking because it's four minutes until the blinds go up. I don't want to be. Go I don't want to be the next. Uh, I don't want to be it to go up right on on our blind kind of thing. And we just uh, can't seem to find a hand here. It's good action though. Always a chance someone busts. Come on, you guys, find something. We're going to be really short next orbit. And it's a 11,000 pay jump, which is really significant, isn't it? And it's just jam. These guys are just jamming, jamming, jamming. Um, so maybe bullet not opening so much is actually not that bad. I would just keep opening anyway, but every hand I think is profitable. But um, They are jamming a bit, so... I mean, everyone's just got this jammy stack size, haven't they? And we're only going to be M3 now. Very tough spot to be in. We might, I'm just thinking, can we actually stall here? I think we can actually. I might just stall a little bit here. Uh, the reason why I'm doing that is just because it's two minutes until the next blind increase and I kind of want it to go up on this guy up here, gentle. Um, because if it comes down to it, it's kind of us and him right now vying for this eleven thousand dollar pay jump between seventh and eighth. And so I just want to make sure it goes up on him. But I don't want to waste too much of my time time bank in the process. Eleven thousand pay jump. Solid. I 
Wow, this is too sick. So the blind's up in one minute, so probably no need to slow it down too much, but... Please, an $11,000 pay jump here. Come on, clown. Clown, 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 clown. 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 9, Jack, Queen, any kind of deck, yes. Oof. <laughs> that was pretty exciting. Uh, I think if it folds this here, we're definitely going to jam this in. I'm just thinking what we're going to do if the weakest opens. Uh, we are the shortest by a fair margin now, aren't we? Yeah, I mean, we're smoking pots, got three, four, five, six, seven. Yeah, we're only M3 and clowns loose, so I think we have to take this as the shortest stack. It's our, it's our sort of, it's our right to fight. Um, three, four, five, six, seven. Yeah, we're only M3. This is just a, and this guy actually might even fold sometimes. Um, and we could even have him crushed. Um, he's been tight, but he just got chips, and he's very aggressive. He's got a raising stack size, so ace ball. Hey yeah, I just think that he can have like king tens and ace deuces and small pairs and maybe even ten jack and stuff. Um, he has been tight, but he just picked up chips, and he's got a good stack size for raising. And uh, if we fold there. I mean, we're only, we're only M3. We've got a guy who raises, um, uh, oops, there's no observed chat. We've got a guy who raises here, uh, I just tell you this, raise first in from middle 20%, cut off 50%, button 71%. Uh, well, actually, you know, a cutoff is 50%, but I'm just thinking he was actually hijack and he has been pretty tight. So it is kind of close, I guess, but I mean, hey, we're only M3 and we have ace nine off. Yeah, it's really close. Three, four, five, six, seven, you know, he can open there with 10 jack, I think king 10. Uh, he's just got a, some chips back that he can play with a bit. Ace four and stuff is probably is he opening ace four? I think he is. Yeah. <coughs> yeah, M three. M ten, I mean very clear. M nine, I mean I still think it's kinda clear against that guy. Um but you know, he's very loose. But he hasn't actually been opening that much. Um Yeah, it's kind of annoying, but 7th, 33,000. It's decent, especially in a free roll. <laughs> uh, and it's pretty level pay, so it's actually not too bad a result. I mean, it's, obviously it's 100k for first, that's decent, but uh, when you're considering how sort of level the pay is, um, normally 7th would be maybe only, uh, what would it be, like, um, maybe only like 15% or like 12% of first, but here it's actually a third, so that's something to be happy about. Uh, so the target was two months, 40k, and uh, we've actually already done it after um, 14 days, two weeks. Uh, obviously ran good. Uh, ace jacking as ace queen and nines there was huge for us. Um, but, uh, you know, I think we were on schedule anyway, but this has just got us there a little bit faster. Um, but, you know, I'm going to keep grinding, obviously, and, um, and uh, you know, try and uh, finish out the, the two months that I said I would do and uh, this gives us a little bit more flexibility now to play a little bit bigger stuff so uh, it's a good result and uh, I did have a cold and stuff guys and it's a bit cold in the room so I had the heater going so the sound quality and so forth uh, apologies for that but uh, I think we got to see some you know fun stuff um, a lot of it was just survival end game there was some pretty close spots, a um, couple of jams maybe we could have made, but I did decide to just knit it up, which I think was fine. We could have lost a lot more plays than we did, but uh, the close decision we had was obviously probably that very last hand, uh, and I think that it's, it's. Uh, I don't think it can ever be bad. Uh, we don't have a lot of fold equity, but he might fold. Um, he hadn't been opening much. 
But I mean, we're only M3 and we're the shortest and we have like sort of half. I mean, it's not even kind of close. I mean, we literally have half the sort of, um, you know, nearest stack and against a player that can have a bit of a range, you know, maybe fault sometimes, maybe call with like Jack Queen or King Tan or Ace, you know, five suited and then, you know, we're ahead and we get a much needed double up. I think it's okay. Um, another way of thinking about it too is if I had a folded and then, you know, an orbit later we're like M2 and we have to go all in with crap uh, because we're so short. I think I I would actually regret the Ace-9 and say, damn, I should have taken the Ace-9 before. Um, and so with that in mind, I don't feel too bad about it. I think it was okay. Um, yeah, I think it was okay. Uh, but that's the end of that chapter. And uh, we're back for some more fun uh, and uh, action. Going to play the Sunday Moons and so forth. Uh, tomorrow, so I'm uh, going to try and get some rest now because it's been a really long session. I mean, that's already went for 11, 10 and a half hours grinding just on that free roll, and I started before this started, so yeah, that's done. Money in the bank and move on. Try and get some more. <laughs> Thanks for watching, guys. This has been Aces Up for PokerNerve.com.